Hello chess friends and welcome to Zadov's chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit series. So in this series we're covering some great lines and some great defenses after the first moves d4 followed with d5 and then if white plays of course the second move c4. We have talked about some Queen's Gambit accepted lines, we have talked about also some Queen's Gambit uh, decline lines, we have talked about also the semi-slav and the slav defense and now uh, we're continuing again our slav defense battle with the so-called alecan variation. The alecan variation is a very aggressive method and in my previous video we have talked about the common mistakes that black can make in the alecan variation but now we're continuing the alecan variation for with a great method for black so this is a video for those who want to play maybe the slot defense and i found really an immortal and great game uh, played by the legendary beast from baku by the legendary gary kasparov here with the black pieces against jan timan and i think if you're a slot defense player and if you want face the alecan variation you can really use this game as your cornerstone because i think it shows the basic principles of this particular line and i think you can use this because uh, the alecan variation is a very very tricky but also very risky idea of white so i think there are great lines uh, to beat the alecan variation from black's perspective and i think uh, this is a perfect game because if you put now this pgn into the uh, new stock with 13 engine it will show you that basically gary kasparov uh, played here a, such an accurate game without inaccuracies mistakes or blunder the centipon loss is only eight so it's really a great performance faction by Gary Kasparov basically Gary Kasparov plays the best suggested move uh here by the stock with 13 engine that's why I think you uh, could use this game if you face the Alakai variation because it's a beautiful game with some great tactics and with some uh great counterplay ideas by by black so let's check out now again the Alakai variation what are the ideas of the Alakai variation and how you should uh, counterplay these ideas from black's perspective so here d4 uh was played the uh, young Timan was uh, Gary Kasparov's opponent he chose of course d4 we have now d5 c4 c6 the slav defense knight to f3 knight to f6 and now after the move knight to c3 we have uh, reached this three knights variation we have talked about this uh, three knights variation very often now in the slav defense and now uh gary kasparov uh, plays i think the best move i think you should play this move if you face the three knights variation of in the slav defense now jan timan plays the move e3 and we have now reached the alekhan position so at the Alecan variation is of course a more aggressive method than to play the move a4 which would be the elephant variation in my opinion from white perspective it's much much better to play the elephant variation than uh, maybe here the Alecan variation because black can play of course this move b5 b5 is fixing now the pawn structure on the queen side here Jan Timan played the normal idea of the Alecan variation the move a4 but uh, in my previous video we have talked about this move this was uh, this move knight to d5 was I think the common mistake uh, that black can make in the um, in the alecan variation and that's not uh, i think the way how you should play this game from black perspective here uh, gary kasparov basically shows how you can really beat the alecan variation he plays now simply the move b4 b4 is of course a very aggressive move the problem is now white will have uh, many many uh, trouble to develop the minor pieces there is of course a problem for black because black with the move b4 has exposed himself has played now uh, with both of these pawns here towards the queen side but these pawns are very very weak now so the idea of the alecan variation is to expose white pawns uh, and then uh, create some weaknesses and then try to trap these pawns try to grab them uh, and then continue the game of course uh, with a great great setup but uh, here Gary Kasparov will not allow uh, Jan Timan to breathe because Gary Kasparov was of course one of the sharpest players in chess history so here uh, he played every move with such a precision with with such a great attack uh, here after move b4 he plays now first to move bishop to a6 and he's inviting now uh, Jan Timan to battle for his pawn because uh, Gary Kasparov has grabbed the pawn and now he's challenging Jan Timan to recapture somehow the pawn uh, so far the c4 pawn is protected so here Jan Timan tries uh, the move queen to c2 if you try here something like knight from b to d2 if you try to attack the spawn further it's not so good again because you can face this move c3 after b takes c3 we have uh, b takes c3 and again okay you can play knight to b1 you will find a way to grab your pawn back uh, the pawn is now weak but the problems i think after bishop to f1 king to f1 now e6 black can play in um, the normal development here bishop to a3 can be played bishop takes a3 rook to a3 and now with c5 i think black has a good 
decent game we can knock kingside castling and still uh white king is really weird here on f1 so white need uh, will need many many tempi in order to secure the king maybe with some ideas of g3 then king to g2 but these are at least two more tempi in order to have a king security meanwhile black is of course doing something black is developing the knights black can maybe then afterwards get use of the b file so still i think black is much much better here so uh that's why uh, here queen to c2 was played so we're trying now from white's perspective to uh capture this pawn on c4 in a different way but uh, again gary kasparov is not allowing here young timon to breathe he plays now the move b3 here queen to d1 and now e6 we have bishop to e2 now c5 c5 is i think a great move here because although your king uh, from black's perspective is also in the center and white's king uh, is still in the center i think the c5 move is a very very cool move because it opens now the position we still have an extra pawn we have to notice that of course uh, black is still this extra pawn it's still protected so white needs to recapture this pawn if white doesn't uh, manage to do that then white is simply strategically and tactically lost here so that's why c5 breaking the position is perfectly fine here in the continuation of the game Jan timan now castled if you play here now for instance d takes c5 then we can simply take queen takes d1 uh, maybe bishop to d1 but again you see when the bishop retreats to d1 it's not attacking anymore the pawn on c4 so here uh, we have bishop to c5 maybe as black's possibility now after bishop to e2 again we can play normal development here from black's perspective knight to c6 maybe again you could try this idea knight to d2 to somehow grab the pawn but with knight to a5 i think black can hang on to this position black can protect this extra pawn and you see now this bishop's activity is simply bad the bishop is blocked out by its own knight even if you manage to some somewhere remove your knight maybe to f1 knight to g3 still this bishop is blocked out by its own pawn and you see now black's activity is much much better both of these bishops are very good here the knight can be maybe afterwards centralized but first of course we have to protect our pawn on c4 and then afterwards also maybe this knight could come into the game i think even in this position queenside casting would be a possibility then the rook would would be very active here on the default so as i said here it's already a bad position for um, uh, for white so that's why uh taking out the pawn here d takes c5 is simply not a good idea so as i said here gary kasparov played really perfect game here after the move castling was uh, played by jan timan and the gary kasparov continues simply the pressure in the center knight to c6 and here jan timan tried knight to e5 it's also a natural idea we're again attacking the pawn on c4 twice but again now a perfect move here by Gary Kasparov, we have now to move rook to c8 because if you try now knight takes c4 it's not so good because you can simply c takes d4 and now you could maybe try this tactic knight to d6 it seems like a perfect move but we can simply take bishop takes d6 maybe you can try here bishop to a6 but uh here after rook to b8 the pawn on b3 is protected and you can be the judge of this position again simply the bishop is blocked out by its own pawn the knight cannot move that's the main issue and the problem is now you don't have also good attacking opportunities here with the light bishop you can maybe try bishop to b5 but this uh, uh, can be protected if you for instance try bishop to b5 then we can i think simply play queen to c7 and maybe you could try here to play the move queen to b3 but a6 uh, would be very very tricky after bishop takes c6 here queen to c6 and still this uh rook is protected you have to again move the queen somewhere and i think again after castling uh activating the pieces uh white is uh, simply strategically lost the so rook to c8 will happen uh you have to play again many many tempi knight to c3 is not a possibility so basically you have problems how to develop your minor pieces black is simply faster so here in the game after the move knight to e5 so as i said uh, it seems so that black can recapture the pawn on c4 but uh, as we said here because gary kasparov played the perfect move rook to c8 we have now knight to a3 jan timan is trying now to recapture the pawn on c4 with this knight but again gary kasparov plays simply a great move takes now in the center we have knight to c4 finally jan timan grabbed the pawn on c4 but now queen to d5 queen to d5 is a great move because we have talked about this ideas to centralize your pieces around the square d5 okay black uh has lost now the very important pawn on c4 but the activity again of white's pieces is simply great the knight on e5 now is hanging here jan timan tried to move bishop to f3 but gary kasparov played first knight to e4 we have knight takes c6 we have rook to c6 and now knight to d2 and it seems so that something went wrong here for gary kasparov because the knight is pinned but of course we have now the opportunity to play the move f5 
f5 is now really fixing the position in the center what you don't want to do of course from a uh, black perspective in these positions maybe even uh, a couple moves earlier you don't want to take here uh, d takes e3 then the bishop could come come out maybe with bishop to e3 and then uh, maybe white could simply improve the position of the dark square bishop so you don't want to take we're waiting white to take on d4 and then uh, then we can maybe uh, make something happen so here after move knight to d2 as we said f5 uh, here we have rook to e1 by uh, gary kasparov and now d3 paralyzes really the position you see now how uh, white's position is really weird uh, all of the pieces are not so good they are really blocked out uh, here a great paralyzing move by the beast from baku great great uh, setup here d3 is protecting the whole position uh, the uh, the th third rank is simply occupied although this now uh, this pawn is weak but still uh, this bishop now will get very very active and again i'm pointing out the bishop on c1 of white is again a bad piece that happens many many times uh for white if white plays this um uh, this alapin or this alakine variation of the slot defense many times uh white has trouble with the dark school bishop here after move d3 knight to b3 okay jan timan has his pawn but now with the move e5 uh, gary kasparov takes away a very very important square now for the knight if the knight would come on d4 then it would be perfect perfect knight but now after move e5 you see this central pawn storm that Gary Kasparov has built here it's simply I think too much to handle here for Jan Timman so uh, bishop to d2 finally trying to get this bishop into the game but now Gary Kasparov plays simply rook to b6 attacking the uh, knight on b3 bishop takes e4 we have f takes e4 knight to c1 by Jan Timman and now rook takes b2 uh, this is a great move we'll now uh, again black is up of whole pawn and now uh, there is again the problem where to go with your knight where to go with your rooks where to go with this bishop so it's simply again a lost game here for white so here in the game bishop to c3 seems like a great idea but here gary kasparov plays of course a great counter-attack plays now the move d2 we have rook to f1 if you try for instance bishop takes b2 it's not so good we can simply take um uh, queen takes uh, oh, oh, of course e1 uh, the promotion then queen to e1 has to be played but now bishop to b4 would be a winning game Im uh, immediately for for black because where to go with the queen you don't have a good square basically the queen is trapped of course if you take uh, bishop take uh, queen takes b4 then uh, queen to d1 is simply checkmate so that's why uh, it's a bad game here for white uh, white doesn't have good opportunities to counterplay uh, here after move uh, d2 here Jan Timan played simply rook to f1 and now Gary Kasparov simply takes bishop to f1 we have bishop takes b2 now bishop to c4 by Gary Kasparov this pawn is now very very annoying and now Jan Timan tried the move knight to e2 bishop to b3 by Gary Kasparov we have knight to c3 here Jan Timan is also trying to counter attack uh, the queen Gary Kasparov simply takes bishop takes d1 we have knight to d5 and again uh, bishop to b3 this bishop pair is simply I think again too much to handle this pawn is again very annoying here Jan Timan played the move knight to c3 bishop to b4 by Gary Kasparov and now after the move knight to d1 it seems so that uh, white has maybe solved now the position that white has solved uh, the tactical and positional problems in this game but here after the move kingside calcin actually jan timan resigned it's great uh, to see that the game ends when one one player is calcin so as i said after this move after kingside calcin by gary kasparov jan timan resigned because he realized there's nothing much that can be done let's see a possible continuation we can play here maybe from white's perspective this move bishop to e5 you can grab the pawn but it's not so good we can simply play rook to c2 the idea is clear we want to play bishop to d1 and then rook to c1 and there's no good way how to protect this position you could maybe try bishop to b2 uh, to try defend your c uh, c1 square but again it's not so good we can simply play bishop to d1 after rook to d1 this is now the move that we're first playing of course we're playing Playing rook to c2 attacking the bishop and uh, wherever the bishop goes uh, we can simply take or if bishop to a1 happens uh, rook to c1 will again happen and uh, white has to resign this position so you could maybe try instead of this idea uh, to take th this pawn on e5 you could try maybe to move your king uh, towards uh, towards the pawn but again it's not so good bishop to c4 will happen and again you have to retreat and now we can play bishop to e2 and again we're trying then rook to c8 rook to uh, rook to c2 and as i said uh white is simply lost here so uh, 
this is a perfect game by Gary Kasparov. As I said, if you put this PGN into, this, uh, into the new stock with 13 engine, it will show you that Gary Kasparov played here a game without inaccuracies, mistakes, or blunders. Every move was basically a stock with 13 move. Incredible, incredible game. It, it was played in 1998, where, of course, Gary Kasparov couldn't have uh, the stock with 13 engine. So, great, great game here by the Beast from Baku. I really love this game. And as I said, if you face the Alekhine, uh, Alekhine variation of the Slav defense, you can use this uh, game by Gary Kasparov as your method how to beat the Alekhine because uh, in my previous video we have talked about uh, the, the mistakes that um, that Black can make but I st still think after the move E3 which is now the Alekhine variation we should proceed here simply with B5 then after the move A4 try to move b4 a knight to b1 can happen bishop to a6 we're protecting first we're challenging now white how is going to, uh, white going to recapture the pawn on c4 queen to c2 okay again a new tempo we're creating spaces queen to d1 e6 and then c5 i think is a very important move that you have to recognize that you have to uh, simply break the position in center never allowing here white to have a domination in center c5 is breaking the position and then of course after castling simply continue our oppression in the center there are of course sidelines of this uh, particular position white can play uh, many different lines but i still think that this setup we can use in order to beat the alakine variation so okay i hope that you enjoy this game i really enjoyed it a lot interesting interesting stuff uh here introduced to us by uh, gary kasparov if you want to study the slav defense more you can check out my whole series of the slav defense here's our link and uh, if you have trouble maybe to play as black uh, you can choose uh, to follow also my hyper accelerated dragon Sativan defense series as a good respond to e4 and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and the uh, chess is the best of course